When you take the so-called red pill, your perspective is drastically altered. The veiled, pleasant, yet artificial world you thought was reality stripped away. You perceive the unseen structures that shape society, the power struggles between different factions, and the manipulative tactics used by those in power to keep the populace appeased and restrained. Let's be honest, red pilling is about women. So, individuals like Nyanchwani, author of the book 50 Memos to Men, frequently claim to have red pilled themselves. Critics often associate them and other similar voices with far right conspiracy theorists who harbor anti feminist sentiments. Nyanchwani even refers to himself as the chairman of the National Welfare Desk of Men. Welcome to Dialogues with Jekero. In a world full of quick opinions and half baked ideas, I aim to bring depth, insight, and rigorous examination to the conversation. This isn't just another YouTube channel or podcast. It's a forum for challenging views, for testing the strength of our beliefs under the scrutiny of informed dialogue. In the process, we might all learn something new, myself included. But what's even more crucial is the understanding you as the viewer or listener gain from each episode. So let's cut through the noise, dig deeper, and invite enlightenment. Welcome to Darongs with Jagero and Silas Yanchoni. How are you doing, my good man? I'm good. Uh, I want to tell you something. Eh? Mm-hmm. I always tell my... I have friends who are not married. Yeah. Uh, Rick Sonyango. You know Rick's poet, right? Of course, yeah. Sonyango Tieno. He's a good friend, yeah. He's a good friend of yours. Yeah. He's, not, he's not yet married. He chickened out the other day. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get much into it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have another one and I have another one. Even the, even the cameraman, one of the cameramen is one of my friends who is uh, contemplating whether they should get married or not. Yeah. And uh, I always tell them that dating is something that I do not want to get into. I am married with one child, seven years, going to eight years in January. Yeah. And I always say that it would be a, it would be a, it would be a big... A big problem if I were to go back to dating because I hated it. It's crazy. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 crazy. I, I I don't know how people actually manage to date because dating for men is is very burdensome. Very Can I tell you a story? Mm-hmm, sure. My cousin uh, liked this lady, mm-hmm. and they were supposed to go for a date at a boretum. Yeah. And they did go for that date. And then uh, it started drizzling. Yeah. And the guy did not have money. Mm-hmm. Like, like no money, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and so the lady that they were with said, well, let's go to Java mm-hmm. and, and have something. Yeah. So they went to Java. I mean, this guy was like, can we go somewhere else? And this was a lady that was used to Java and... Mm-hmm. The likes of Java, CJs, yeah. you know. Mm. If you're going to CJs, we are going to Java. If you're not going to Java, we are going to somewhere more beautiful. Mm-hmm. So they went to Java. And this guy, my cousin, is telling me that the walk from Aboretum to Java in town was the longest walk yeah. <laughs> he has ever done. Yeah. And um, they went to Java and uh, he, took, he took coffee mm. without any money in his pocket yeah. and the lady took i don't know milkshake this milkshake thing man <laughs> i don't know what what they put in it <laughs> so <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh obviously he didn't have the money to pay mm-hmm. and the the lady paid for it mm-hmm. and that's can be can that can be very humiliating <laughs> <laughs> so and that relationship died that evening yeah and um, when I asked him why it died, he said that he could wake up tomorrow and call that lady. <laughs> 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 he couldn't wake up tomorrow and call that lady. Okay. And uh, I don't know why he couldn't, but I think he was socialized to believe that he's the one to take care of a woman. Ideally, that's what 99% of women expect. I don't know about expecting. I don't know. You know, you know, I, I talked with some some lady about feminism and she told me that I told her that women are more likely to clean after 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 people have eaten. They are more likely like genetically, they are more likely to take to take um, to take this the sahanis and the dishes and take them to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. They are more likely genetically, mm-hmm. biologically mm-hmm. to 
to to give water to people yeah. to you know uh, uh, to to wash their hands mm. and she told me no that is not genetical that is not biological that is socialization women have been brought up to to be and socialized that they are the ones to clean after men to clean after everybody else so when you say that mm -hmm. that that's what women expect mm -hmm. uh have they been taught or when women expect that you're supposed to pay the bill or you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that and they can only buy a tie which is which is worth nothing and they can only buy a belt which is 170 shillings and they can only buy what other things i hear they also buy uh nail cutters <laughs> which is basically 50 bob at, at Carrefour. so um we are talking about men saying that look this has been this is not healthy to us that is the gospel you preach no, I don't preach that gospel. What is the gospel that you preach? <laughs> no. That's the gospel you preach. That is the memo. No, 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 no. That is... Um, okay, okay, okay. That's like okay. on the extreme end of things. Is that extreme? That's not uh, extreme, Nanchwani. No, but um, what we've been telling men is that uh, if at all you are going to be the one who's paying the bills, who's providing, then there are certain a, a, a certain measure of expectation that you have from the lady. Yeah. So the problem we're having with women right now is that for my, for men like all those things that you do, uh, there is no reciprocity from women. Yeah. Like you you give hundred percent and she probably give you like twenty or thirty depending on how she feels like. Um, in the manosphere, they, they they have talked about like uh, alpha fucks, beta bucks. You know, like there are men who get uh, um, who get far more from women by giving them the list. I used to be that guy, like if I see a beautiful lady that I like and I'm like, okay, I want to take her out, treat her very well, you know, buy, buy some good whiskey, buy some good wine for her, you know. And then uh, I pop into a club and I find like she's drinking the cheapest and most horrible gin on the table and eating bad food. And she's okay with that. And then she'll come to Silas. And because Silas is like, oh, Silas is a soft guy. And he's like, um, Silas has taken me on a day. Silas, you know. So women have men that they set rules for. And they have men that they break rules for. So we're trying to make these men who are, um, who lack game, to also understand the female nature. To understand the dynamics, like how the a woman's brain works. So basically that's what uh, the Red Pill has been doing. And the people are like opposed to it. They don't like it because if all men had the game, then women will be in trouble. Mm. Yeah. What what kind of trouble? Um, still, men control capital, and uh, it's now like in in Kenya, for example, it's now that women are now getting to have their own money, their own salaries. But a large majority of women still depend on men. So if men are going to ask for accountability from women, uh, we are going to get in trouble because th that's not something that women like, especially the mm. modern woman who lives in um, an urban space, you know, they don't like that. Mm. So when men start now asking for accountability, like if I'm going to give you this money, if I'm going to provide for you, uh, I'm expecting A, B, C, D. You see this, like especially the military men, uh, those who pay like school fees for girls in college, and then they expect that Atamalza Shule, then Almaria. Why is it? Why is this about military men? Like uh, the men in uniform, like um, I'm talking about, like the army, the soldiers. Yeah. You know, you, you, you every other day, like the, the, the soldier has killed a woman. You know, they kill the women because they did A B C to the woman, and they expected some sense of reciprocity from the woman, but. <laughs> Uh, the woman was like, no, I'm What is speaking my interest actually is why is it that this, why is, are these soldiers that are doing this thing that are, that are taking women to school? No, mostly because, you know, the soldiers, we, 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 we say that despite being like the most masculine men, being like the most masculine men in terms of the physical, uh, yeah. the intense exercise they do, they're actually very blue pilled. It's because they are taken when they are very young and the disciplined forces, you're, you're, you're there, take orders, you don't question anything. So they don't learn to be men and to be independent minded. So that means that um, when they'll be interacting with women, they'll expect that you can order women around. You can order these cameramen around where you want because they're boys, but 
if you're working with women, you can't order them around. There's a way that uh, we relate with women. The way you relate with me is not the way that you relate with with women. It's slightly different. So they come with that mentality from the police force, and they think that they can translate that into their daily lives. And sometimes it doesn't work because women don't play by the rules. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting to hear. Um, there is somebody that said that the pussy is always for sale. Like, like a woman can always use 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 her body, yeah, to get whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. And they say that the reason why men are always uh, getting in hard to control the ladies or to get to get to get a, a deal, you know, like right now in the red pill community, we are getting a real deal, mm-hmm. right? That is the assumption that we are getting a real deal, yeah. right? Would you would you would you say that that is? Yeah, it's absolutely uh, a real yeah. deal. In fact, there's even a name to that. Yeah, the name um, it's derogatory, but it says whole flesh in a combination of whole and inflation. Yeah, whereby like it's defined as men are paying f- ten times what our fathers used to pay. Mm. And getting far less than what our fathers used to get. Mm. You know what I mean? Like our fathers could get women who are chaste, maybe virgins, you know, femininity, um, submissive, can, and all you that. You can still get a and, virgin in town. Uh, <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but the issue of virginity is neither here nor there. Yeah. We basically, like, um, the, you look at our grandfathers and our fathers, of course, that that was their world, and we live in a different world. Eh? The kind of woman that they would get uh, for just paying maybe like I don't know three, four cows is very different from a woman that I'll get today. If I'm to get like a career woman, and maybe she'll be quite old, uh, she'll be having her own money, but she'll be, she'll be expecting me to also be providing for her, you know, despite her having her own money. And also, I'm not going to expect that she'll be she'll be like the traditional submissive feminine woman. That's mm. not possible because of the world where we live in. It's not like entirely her mistake. That's the world she grew up in. She didn't grow up, or she she wasn't trained on how to be submissive or how to be a wife. She was trained just like any other man to go to the workplace and work. And what happens is that if you only go to the workplace is um, the workplace is a very competitive environment, yeah. uh, so it tends to sort of like to 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 raise their testosterone. Uh, so you find like uh, even look at women in politics. You know, women at high up the level, they're, they're more or less like men. So you don't get to see that feminine, you know, that soft semina, feminine side. You know, that's what mm. happens. Mm. I, I'm still going back to that question about the, my my theory about why I think women are saying to themselves men like sex Mm -hmm. and because they like sex Mm -hmm. i'm going to hold this and say that okay if you want to have sex with me you have to buy me coffee if you want to have sex with me you want to you have to you have to you have to be paying that that one that uh, that 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 one bedroom house in kilimani if you want to have sex with me you have to buy me that iphone if you want to have sex with me you have to take me to mombasa do this to do this thing and you see men doing it so my i don't know if if it is correct to say that men 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 sort of the idea that men always expect to give something in order to have sex because i've never understood whether actually women enjoy sex because if they do enjoy sex mm-hmm. then they should also be able to go out and look for sex <laughs> you know <it's>, uh... <laughs> you see so 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 is it a lie that that why at what point did we realize that we have to give something in order to have sex at what point did we realize that we have to give something in order to get love because i feel like men are buying love you know yeah the girl we're animals we have to start from there yeah biologically we're animals and throughout the all the species eh, men have to pay a certain price for them to access sex from women and uh, that's how it is like um, women are gatekeepers of sex mm. and she's not going to give you sex on a silver plate in fact it's now that sex has become easily accessible that men don't even have to work hard for it in the past as a man I, i'm sure we are about in the same age and mm. uh, you know how difficult it was in the village just to convince a girl you know to seduce her you know so they are gatekeepers of sex. Having a, having a, having yeah, sex in the, in the village looked like rape, actually. Because you'll say no until the very end. 
exactly you know so, th- you that know, was how difficult it was it was difficult yes uh, but when you can come to the urban spaces it becomes um like now men have sort of like have an oversupply of sex like uh, you don't even have to work for it and that also has to really change the dynamics on how we did but still you have to pay for it one way or another either as a, either if it's if you are married you expect to pay those bills if it's, if it's a mistress uh, that rent you know ah uh, hey are you supposed to pay that and often I argue with women when i tell them that men don't cheat as much as women because for a man to cheat it's very expensive like the most basic debt that you can go let's say that i have a i have a lady called susan if you go to java the least you can spend there is maybe 2000 Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to a club maybe she'll have like four guaranas you'll have maybe two bottles of guinness some kind of choma that's really like 3000 or 3500 and you have to get a room a decent room maybe it's from a thousand or so for you to just go take out a lady out for a night you need like 4000 5000 in this economy how many men have that, that kind of money so that's why like it's very few men who actually control you have like 10% of men who control almost 70% of all the sexual activity in the world because they can afford yeah Mm. So the men who afford have a high access and women are very select with whom they sleep. That's just some broke men don't get lucky. If a woman is, is the gatekeeper of sex mm-hmm. and she gets horny, does she not? Does she? That she gets horny of herself. Course. Yeah. She's the gatekeeper of sex. She's saying that I cannot pay you are not going to get this unless you know even if they don't tell you to pay for it they're like okay we are going to do this you're going to do this i am available when you're available tell me where we are going tell me when i'm being picked and things like that so so then so then do, do you think how do, do you think women who, who like really want to have sex go about it they still go look for a man and still force the man to pay for it no now as, as i mentioned earlier there are men who are given those rules there are men who have to buy sex and the men were actually even paid to to have sex with women you know so it depends on the level of your game as a man if you don't have game then you have to it becomes more expensive like there's a lady who can sleep for me for free and there's a lady that you have to pay prime for you to sleep with her like women always know how to game like they also play the same game that men play so atangalia ono silas I don't like him he's not handsome but uh, he has money so she can sleep for the money but when they want that sex they also have the men that they can easily get it from they can even pay for it if they have to yeah mm. the dick plugs <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, they're, same, they're, the, same, the same way of booty calls yeah they do have also their dick plugs I, there is a lady who told me that she has a dick plug yeah huh? That happens. I found it very very interesting. You know there are so many interesting things in this town Mr. Silas. Yeah, so much is going on. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I was having an interview with Rex, a chat with Rex and he was mm-hmm. telling me that mm-hmm. uh they were they were he was he, he, he was going to sleep with this lady and I was well, what do you mean you're going to sleep with this lady? And he was just telling me we were all we were both horny at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I found that very 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 interesting. Okay so um <clears throat> so they are the guest keepers of 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 sex. of sex they they can decide that okay for Jagero I'm going to have uh, he's going to remember dick plug and I'm going to even pay to have sex with him yeah but then Silas Gentuani is there and I'm feeling like no this one has to pay Silas has to pay it depends on what she wants from you maybe she wants a baby maybe she wants good sex maybe she wants emotional connection like women have those varied needs and uh, not one man can fulfill all of them the bad boys just want smash to smash and maybe disappear what what are the needs do you know them no they have like the the, the emotional needs that's why you have like uh, men who are friend zoned <laughs> the men like when she needs some therapy unamtumia mamim sana chaka chaka shika you are like a soundboard to the ideas and they are comfortable doing that kind of work and when could you see in the ovulation cycle of like in that monthly cycle yeah there's a time when a woman needs like a bad boy you know mm. especially when she's ovulating she's likely to be attracted to men who are muscular you know they have that muscular scent you're muscular you know and then there's a time in the month when now they're not i don't know which the correct word to use when they're not ovulating 
now they tend to fire to feel secure in men who are no less masculine you know so it's purely hormonal it's not something that they even, even themselves they don't even control of it mm. so that's why like uh, you'll see a woman has dumped a very good guy to go and be with a, a bad boy you know like you've seen women up there making some really really horrible choices in men so it's not something that is within their control sometimes mm. it's just the hormones messing messing them up but they can also red pill themselves and you know try and and look at it properly and say okay there is something happening to my body and this is why i'm tending towards this direction i sh- i should stop it needs some bit of self awareness but uh, as we mentioned earlier um, accountability is not really like a feminine trait that's a very sexist word to say no face. like it, it's how we interact with women and we, it's, 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 it's not something that is academic <laughs> it's not like an academic it's <laughs> we, how we, we, relate, we explain it properly in it's how we relate with the women yeah have you ever had like an argument with your spouse yes and you try to hold her accountable and you see her trying to twist the argument yes 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 to, yes, yes know, making you look bad trying to make you responsible for what she's done yes it's because the way we raise girls sometimes we are not uh, very harsh on them but you can be very harsh like a, i remember as a boy like uh, Uh, my father or my guardian they couldn't spare me if i made a very simple mistake so it, it's easier to call men to order than it is to call women to order, order. yeah so that's when now the source of concern that sometimes and right now actually one of the biggest problems with the the red pill women are with the red pill is men asking accountability from women so that, that that is like the biggest argument women have against the red pill they don't want to to have that like discussion about yeah. accountability yeah. like if you sent her fare yesterday and she's supposed to be coming today and she's asking me for another fare and you're asking what happened to the one that I sent already she doesn't want to she doesn't want to account for the money that you sent to her As somebody told me L- it, let me tell you a very funny story yeah uh, i think sometime last year I was in a club some funny mm. club along mombasa road yeah so i saw this very attractive girl and uh I took some fancy to her and then asked for a number and I asked her out and one day she told me like need to me a fair nakuja so I sent her a fair and ikazama hivyo she disappeared I tried to follow up and then I realized that I'm dealing with a, a girl who's really ghetto so I blocked her so I think a year later I see her, an attractive girl in the club and she looks really very familiar and uh, i still ask her out you know we attract a type so she gives me a number then i save the number then i'm trying to text her on whatsapp and i'm like this number is blocked and i'm like who's she then i'm trying to follow up it's a lady at my fair <laughs> and uh, i asked her that last year i even sure the church was like no 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 the crazy part is that she still now wanted us now to go out with me and i'm like no i didn't i blocked her now for good <laughs> did, 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 did do you think she knew that you are the one yeah i showed her the chat no no i'm asking when when you guys met for the second time did do you think she realized that this is the guy that whose heir is she didn't realize because that's what they do but after i showed her the chat she could remember because the chat was very specific like i've sent you this amount of money you're supposed to do a b c d come to my place then uh she didn't show up so this time round now she was like oh she's willing to make up for it and you know i was like what happened last time mm. you know like i was forcing you to come you're the one who told me like send me the fare you could have asked for money for food you could have asked money for anything but you asked for fare i sent you fare but you didn't show up mm. but she was still trying to scatter around the bush to, you know to, to, to mess around with me mm. so i still insist that um <clears throat> accountability is a big problem but the beauty of it is that now we are moving towards a space where they can never run away from that they also have to own up for their own mistakes you know if um, you sleep around with sketchy men and get a child by them then be ready to deal with that you can come out and say oh, men are dead beats men are what but you have to own up to that you've been left with a child and you have to pay some price for that So that's why like you're trying also to tell now women now they have to be accountable with the kind of men who could uh, you know like the issue of my fathers you could even, a man could even marry like for example a single mother of three children and it could work but now we moved into that space now men are saying like no I don't want to touch that I don't deal with that you know so that's that's now where the question of accountability comes in accountability yeah yeah and um, 
so but then it it's it has always been uh, when don't judge women that you know there is there is that is how do you know that they slept with sketchy men maybe they didn't see this person as sketchy i mean there is always the fact that they didn't the, the assumption that they didn't think that this this man was going to be sketchy that's true mm. and uh, that's now the what you can call like the bad luck side of things mm. but you see for us men especially the red pill movement i can easily like if a man sees me with the wrong lady men are always upfront silas me told them happy like <laughs> i remember 10 years ago i called this chick uh, to a club that was like around uh, mm. 2011 the people try to adjust the mic so that is you it is it is like that yeah that's so, okay mm. then my friend was like my friend came and she saw me this pretty lady and is like silas i was in the moment of my poor like was up front <laughs> <laughs> this kind of like they they know that he knows me yeah and there's a certain class of women that respects me to be with so the good thing with the, with us men that we can be honest with each other i can tell men like oh the ladies for the streets and that one you can take her home but uh for women uh, for women sometimes they don't know how to make that distinction like they'll see nick cannon as like i don't know 12 to 12 children and another girl still want to sleep with him but the consequences you know mm. so that, that that inability for them to not interrogate like what is the consequence of what i'm doing mm. um, is what they cannot escape from moving forward in the past the society more or less like took care of that in america for example uh, the state takes care of like the the mistakes for example women make mm. and it feels in the absence of men uh, by you know providing uh, everything that a man is not able to provide mm. but that is not going to work. it's not sustainable in the long run yeah so now women also know i suppose now women will be treated as men basically the red pill is asking men to treat women the way women treat men mm. so that's this and that one is can never work it's not sustainable let's talk about feminism yeah i don't know if you've you've had a a, a big thought about around it uh right now um in the on the on, in the online space mm -hmm. uh the conversation is very is very surreal it's very difficult mm -hmm. like <clears throat> you find you find people like silas who are very brave mm -hmm. and can go ahead and talk about these things mm -hmm. and s in my estimation i feel like women are used to it there are men mm -hmm. <clears throat> on social media yeah. that have grown very thick skin mm -hmm. and i think you are one of them yeah you will find uh jacobaliet you will find uh i also sometimes try and just talk my mind yeah without fear I've of read, <laughs> I've read a couple of good things from you <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so but then but then there are this category of men who are very afraid mm -hmm. and for good reasons yeah they have a job to keep absolutely especially the, if you're in the NGO sector yes the NGO sector and uh, they just don't want to touch that issue mm -hmm. and so so we have a category of women that are just that are just rough online yeah and they can say what they want to say about men mm -hmm. and men cannot even go and post a comment yeah. say that you know you shh, don't even try we have been silent for too long mm -hmm. don't come here and tell us what you think we should say mm -hmm. you know and so you find a lot of these men that are that are just basically you for a, you could call them cowards for lack of a better word but they are not mm -hmm. the, you can see that this the world is against them and if they try talk mm -hmm. they can't yeah so what and then and then when you look at the ladies they are always talking about let's have a conversation like mm. most of the feminists let's have a conversation mm. let's converse about this thing but as a man you're not allowed to mm -hmm. but I, i think that you have decided that okay i am going to talk about this thing mm -hmm. and i am ready for the repercussions yeah at what point do you think that you know this is about what point do you think that at what point do you outgrow this fear and say that as a man i can speak because would you not like all men to speak like you do yeah absolutely but i think you know if i was to give you my background yeah 
the first piece I ever wrote that was published, um, that's like uh, almost 16 years ago, uh, and I think I was uh, 20 or so, was actually about, you know, the situation you gave me about uh, your cousin being in a I asked a very simple question, what do women want? And I narrated like, I've gone out with women, I've put a jacket yaka to give her my jacket, I've sent them roses, you know, I've done all that romantic, uh, romantic stuff. But still, we are never good enough. And so I've been in that space for the last um, 16 years. I used to run a column in the Nairobi and called the retrosexual. I was trying to play like the traditional old, you know, out all the, is like the opposite of the metrosexual man. So I've been in that space for the longest time. And actually, the Twitter space, if you are there, be in the 2010s was really horrible. Especially there are feminists there that we could not handle, we could not even have a conversation with. They could just dismiss you or smash you on your face. And I even had to quit like Twitter. Like Twitter is not one of my, like I don't use Twitter that much. I'll just go there, retweet something and leave. Because it was extremely very toxic. So that toxicity in Twitter is what has poured onto, uh, onto Facebook. But in all those arguments uh, that men are having, women are having, the problem there is basically the economy. And when the economy is doing very badly for men, you tend to have less desirable men because the key indicator, like the, the first thing women consider, if you meet a lady, the first thing she'll ask you that, what job do you do? How do you pay your bills? Any other lady, like if you go on a date, they'll sneak in that question within the first 10 minutes. One or another, like even if I start chatting a chick right now, like, hey, I'm interested in you, nini, nini, nini. In no time, that question will somehow pop in, you know. So when men don't have money, uh, they can't access sex. And sex or now, love. Sex or love. Uh, so sex becomes a precept of a few men. So the resentment from men now is what can easily create the manosphere. And now from women, they're easily complaining, oh, wanuma waogi, they are no good men, they are no funny men, you know. But the whole argument is basically the number of desirable men in society uh, from the women's perspective, because they are very selective and they are selective for a reason, what you normally call hypergamy. You, you know, you can't just give birth to another man because it's, it's very expensive to raise a child. Uh, the whole process of the pregnancy and raising a child, you really need like a strong man, a man who can be there, a man who can provide. It's not like it's a bad thing. So that, that selectivity now breeds resentment in, in both camps. Women want more, uh, more desirable men, especially financially. And men would, wish, would, would still wish to access women. So... Now, you see that barrier that has been created there. So that's what creates this problem and breeds that kind of toxic that you see online. It's basically about the economy. It's not like women are bad or men are bad. It's just purely, uh, if the economy was to work today... People, people are angry. Yeah, if the economy was to work today, like let's say if President Trump was to turn around this economy and within three, four years, men have jobs, you won't see that kind of toxicity. But men, men, men are going to... My men are still going to really compete with women to have these jobs. So then, if, even if they are going to compete, as long as they, like, let's say, if you go to like this, those Canadian countries, you really find like the red pill being very vibrant. The red pill movement is vibrant in countries that are very capitalistic, and in countries where the income inequalities are extremely very high, so that you have like more men at the bottom, and then you know that's how like people like Trump rise to the top. <laughs> that is that's but, very, that's very interesting. That 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 red pill community is just on uh, with in communities where very capitalistic men are having nothing to do. You look men are in men in are Africa, hungry. South Africa, Zimbabwe, and maybe Kenya, but uh, the red pill movement is very vibrant. Nigeria, not so much. Uganda, I don't hear it. Uganda, it's not there that much because Uganda is still very egalitarian. And um, they have food, you know, the women are still feminine. They have not been like uh, adopted like the, you know, that predatory, very competitive way of living that we do in Kenya. Yeah. Mm. So that's why you see like it's in America, some parts of the UK, some parts of the, some parts of Europe. Yeah. Mm. It's the messed up countries that you tend to find these kind of arguments. Yeah. yeah. So I want to go back to go to go to, to, 
to your your outlook of life and what you're trying to tell men. Mm-hmm. I've forgotten exactly what the, the, the there are three parts yeah. I told you about. Uh, there is the your, first part of your life as a man. Your life as a man. Your life with women. Your life with women. And your life in marriage. And your life in marriage. It is interesting that you talk about your life in marriage. Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't you don't need to be married to be to talk about this. No, I've, I've been in a long-term relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so I want you to 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 clarify it properly for me so that I understand it. Your life as a man, what what are you what are you saying about that? Basically when I group my memos in that way, mm. what I mean is that it has to start with you. As a man, you have to define who you are. What's your true north? What do you want to do with yourself? What's your purpose in life? You know, uh, what's your career? What are your hobbies? Uh, how do you relate with fellow men? Um, how do you plan your retirement? For example, what's your relationship with uh, God? I'm, I'm a Christian, and now we live in that space where people have different kind of beliefs. Um, most of my friends now are uh, atheists, and you know, so how? What's like your moral ca- compass in life? What do you want f- with yourself? And then now, once you define yourself as a man, naturally, if you are a straight man, one way or another, you have to deal with women. So how do you deal with women? How do you relate with women? Dating, courtship, you know, um, what kind of money relationships, for example, you can have with women? Uh, what kind of women should you take out, you know? And then now, ultimately, you might want to settle down in marriage. Yeah. Then how do you go about selecting your wife? Mm. Uh, how do you go being a good husband to your wife? How do you go about keeping your sanity in marriage because marriage is extremely very demanding on the man. So how do you keep your sanity? How do you play those traditional role of a man? You are a provider, you are a protector, you are a priest, you know. How do you go about them in your marriage? Because the thing with us millennial men, we never had like a manual for these things. Most of us, we probably lost our fathers and mothers to HIV. Uh, maybe our fathers were drunkards, uh, our fathers were absent. For example, like I left college immediately and I never had any discussion with a, an older male relation. So you could pick another girl in college and you take her home to be a wife because so baby, baby, you know, baby this, baby that. <laughs> and then a few years down the line, then you realize marriage is not a romantic movie. Yeah, and I, I I really I really I really love those three things. Yeah. Uh, now you now you're shedding light on them. Mm-hmm. I really love it because um, as men in this city, mm-hmm. I really really wonder if we know ourselves because we are sort of we are sort of just allowing ourselves to be defined by external forces, and I think this is why uh, a lot of us are depressed. A lot of us are do not have you know you listen I. I run a company and a lot of college boys come to me mm-hmm. and uh, they say they want internship. Mm-hmm. But then I, I love having conversation with these young men mm-hmm. about themselves. And I tell you what, around 100% mm-hmm. of these boys that I talk with, mm-hmm. like like all, nearly all of them don't understand themselves. Absolutely. They don't know whether... Uh, several times... They have told me that the course they did was for their parents. You see, Kosiao. Yeah, I want to to finish this and then I want to start something that I love. Mm-hmm. But then when we go, you you go deeper and ask, but what is it that you love? You also don't find a good answer mm-hmm. when you ask that. And it is interesting that because because if this person is twenty three, mm-hmm. and they are so confused about who they are, mm-hmm. and also supposed to be having a relationship with women you remember you talked about who you are yeah. and then you then you progress to your relationship with women yeah. and then marriage yeah so i feel like i feel like people are are, are jumping over these things like you don't know you who you are exactly. uh, and you're already in relationship with a woman yeah and then you don't know who you are and you are married 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 yeah you know so i so i want to so probably you could explain what are some of the things that um, that somebody should know about themselves a man something i know you've done your we men who write books read a lot too yeah mm-hmm. and and sort of you have you have you have this uh, accumulation of knowledge uh, 
about what a man should be about themselves what what is it that you should know about yourself as a man before you start you know uh taking women out to java and proposing to them yeah i think that's a very good question mm. and we need to start uh, what you need to understand is that you learn to become a man from strong men and you are especially if you are like a good father or a strong uh patriarchy in your in your life we don't want you you don't want to hear the word patriarchy and, these days um, mr nyanchwen we don't want to hear the word patriarchy unfortunately these days. we have to because <laughs> it's the patriarchy <laughs> that sets the word straight <laughs> absolutely patriarchy is, no, no, is no. what sets the word straight it's what you know people people confuse the bad elements of society with the patriarchy but patriarchy is not about the bad i've elements. always said that that the people 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 don't 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 think that i'm, I'm people think that i'm right playing no 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 so in the absence of a strong patriarchy or um, father figure in your life as a man you're likely to be lost however good the job the women in your life will do women can't train men to be men you know so then what happens that in Kenya uh, most women by the time they are uh, 45 they are almost half of the women or probably more by the time they're 45 they are either, they are single either widowed, divorced or they never married. What it means that we're raising a whole generation of men without father figures. And then now it means that they're just drifting through life without uh, no one to look up to because men learn by example like I am the man I am because I had like cousins that I could look up to. I still look up to them. Uh, the way they go about their lives, they they have, you know and you know I grew in Nairobi and I also grew up in the village if i grew up in Nairobi i'll probably be a mess but growing up in the village because of those uh, the presence of strong men there's a way that it shapes you so in the absence of that now we need to create something that can help guide these men i need to extend some grace to the young men because in the past you be like una maliza high school you go to college you get a job and then you marry but now you have people who are finishing college and it takes almost 10 years before they can get a good job and they're a good job and you can't marry uh, maybe along they will make a mistake uh, knock a, knock out a girl and so you're not able to feed the girl you're not able to sustain for the child so the girl won't marry you so now you you end up having a society that has so many single mothers because it's not like the fathers are deadbeats because the fathers cannot afford to do anything about the situation yeah but well, i have graduates who are almost in their late 20s early 30s without without a good job they're either unemployed or unemployed and we're losing some to gambling to those vices so we need to go back and now someone i think it's andrew kibe who say that we need to start talking to young men 17 18 to try and tell them some very harsh realities about life so that now once they step into the world they can know like i need to have a purpose in life Uh, I, I, i need to know what i want and sometimes what you want for example you might want to be a musician but uh, it's not sustainable you're not going to pay the bills then you have to do something else in, in between as you try to work on your dream like for example if you want to be a writer you can actually have a job a daytime job and work on your writing at night a good example is uh, my friend jacob alliot he has a full time career but because he's so bad wanted to be a writer either you work on that on the side so that's how now we start training men that first of all you need to learn how to feed yourself fend for yourself and then down the line if you have like a passion for something you can work on it to pole pole because now we have this uh, generation of instant grat- gratification where you want to warm up at overnight and we, the political leadership in the country the religious leadership has not done a good job to train men that uh, for us um men we are born without value and value is something that we have to make of ourselves but a woman is born with value and she has to preserve that value so that's something that we need to hammer into the heads of of uh, young boys yeah mm. and then after this boy has has, has known everything about himself i'm a i'm a jijua mm-hmm. so then you start you know relating with women mm-hmm. mm. you start relating with women and um how you relate to women is it took us a while to realize that men are the true romantics women love men, love specific things in men a woman can love you because you are handsome maybe because you are rich uh, maybe because of something you did for her 
but there's no day a woman can love a man for his for his like it has to be something that is very specific and that's why it's very easy for women just leave marriage and 70 percent of women just walk out of marriage because if what she liked in you she can no longer see it she can easily disengage but for us men if you love a woman you love her for who she is and uh, entirely what she compresses so that, that that's it works so we train men on how once you understand yourself you can know what kind of a woman that you can handle there's a memo that i wrote you need to know women are like cars and uh, there are men who can afford a range rover there are men who can only afford a car do the men who can afford maybe a boda boda you know so you need to know you need to measure yourself uh, depending on the depth of your pocket the strength the emotional strength that you have some men are really very weak you know so you need to understand so that you now you don't go after a woman who can run you down and ruin you you know yeah because she's not your mother and she doesn't care about who you are so that's something that men need to want to start understanding jacob elliot was telling me that women that men always think mm -hmm. that men are li that men always think that women are like their mothers that the love that comes with the mother is the same love that no, comes with the woman absolutely no man has that a woman can only love her children and herself <laughs> and, um, and that is that is you talked about you not being an extremist no like but, but that's a fact you know yeah when you talk about these things people take them negatively yeah yeah but understand yeah, she's yeah. going to carry this child for nine months that's very that's a very demanding job mm. she's going to take care of this child from the time the child is one to almost 18 that's a very demanding job so she can't be taking care of her babies herself and also take care of you so that's what tell men that you have to take care of yourself first and uh, before a woman can even uh, start taking taking care of you. Like by the time a woman is coming to your life, you have to put, to have your for lack of better your shit in order, you know. Mm. So it's not like uh, women are, are bad people, you know. That's that, that's the notion that people tend to get when talk about these things. Yes. It's only that uh, the responsibility man of uh, the womb like carries such a huge responsibility and such a, a big amount because it's a risk like when a woman gets pregnant for you it's a risk she can die the child can die it can ruin her life so she can only concentrate on herself and uh, the child and then now she can now extend the other love now to other people are siblings but how about the how about the women that are not that are not having any of these things and of this things like her like like she doesn't have a child she doesn't uh, so then that means she will only love herself if she doesn't no love no 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 women can love anyone i'm saying now in a relationship with a man yes in a yes, with a yes, man. yes remember a woman can be a mother of many she can you, you probably have sisters who like you you yes. probably have your aunts your grandma they can love i'm not saying like they cannot love i'm saying mm. the, in relationship with the man the relationship you love with a woman if you're going to be a husband then it's a completely different relationship she expects a lot from you and expect a lot from her so this way that we relate within marriage that's very different from how we relate with each other and that's something that you try to train men to understand that you have to pick the right woman because that's like the most important decision you can ever make if you want to marry you pick the wrong woman and your life is messed up for good mm. yeah what is what is your in your estimation what is a what is a bad woman for lack of a better word but you, you talked about choosing good or bad is relative yeah yeah but what are what are some of the what's what are some of the what are some of the things that in your estimation you look you see in a woman you say don't don't go close asylas for example i would like woman who's feminine so if i see a woman who does not display feminine traits i would like to keep off mm. um i don't really like women who drink this might sound ironical ironic because <laughs> I talk about how I got with the menu drink but uh for a long term relationship uh like marriage uh, I would easily prefer a woman who's a toddler you know that's 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 my definition uh, mm. and I'm not trying to define that for yeah. other men yeah. the men are comfortable going out with their wives and all that but for me I would prefer a woman who's naturally a toddler I don't want to get a woman who's drinking then bring her to my life and start telling her that now you can't drink I would like woman was made that conscious decision that I don't like alcohol. Uh, I like women who are cooperative. Uh, I like women who are uh, who listen. I like women who, who have self awareness. I like women who also have an ambition. I like women who are interesting.
So if a woman, if a man came to you and asked you, Silas, what are some of the things I should look out? What are some of the, the red flags? Because this is not just about you. This is now you giving a general. I always, like, I go back to what uh, I said earlier. You have to understand who you are and what you're, what you're, what you're capable of. And uh, you need to know women are different things to different men. There's a woman who will come to a place at a question back jeans. And the same woman can go to another man's place you know. So you need to understand what kind of value you are driving from this woman. And uh, does she love you for you or does she love you for your money? So to simplify it in the simplest way possible, find a woman who loves you. Mm. Find a woman who loves you. Like once you're attracted to her, you need to figure out, like, does she like me? If she likes you, she can do anything for you. But uh, if maybe she's only with you because you're buying drinks, you're paying rent and all that, down the line, she, they get bored with that. So find a woman who genuinely loves you as a man and work it out. S- start from there. That's like the baseline you start from. Uh, if you, have, for example, have to negotiate for desire, like you have to do A so that she, you have to do this so that she can do this, uh, like there are certain conditions. True love is does not have, is unconditional. So there are men now, like, for example, for, for them to get sex from a woman, they have to do A, B, C, D, you know, a, a certain set of conditions. If they don't do that, they'll get tantrums, you know, on a block, on a poor silent treatment, you know, th- those kind of things. Uh, I tell men to go after women who are mature, who know how to communicate their displeasure. If they're pissed off, they can tell you, I'm not happy with this. You know, just go for women who are well adjusted, Mature. I like that word, well adjusted. <laughs> yeah. There are so many men out here who are not uh, well adjusted and they mess up men. Mm. Because for us men, sometimes we have s- we are so physical in our judgment. Then you want to tolerate uh, some ghetto or some very bad behavior from her. And then you realize down the line that um, you're really getting a very raw deal. Uh, but now you find by the time you're realizing that, you've made a very bad mistake. So I always plead with men who have not, like when people ask me for advice uh, b- before they are married, like I have this lady, I just take, ask them the best questions, like does she have a father, does, does she have like a father figure, uh, who raised her, you know, those kind of things. Um, uh, have, you, have you had like money conversations, how does she think about money, does she believe that her money is her money and your money is your money as a family, you know, those kind of basic things. So when they go back and they do their own research, they come back and then I tell them, no, that's a red flag. Uh, if she wasn't raised uh, in a family where there's some masculine authority, then she's going to have problems following your orders, mm. uh, following your meaning. I guess, I guess the the women can also go to a therapist or somebody else and tell them about these red flags in men. You know, the question that I keep wondering to myself is that you've gotten this girl that is not very. You like her. You like the body. You like everything. But then the question now is that can this person change? Can a man change? I mean, can we? I like you, Silas. Uh, you, you are the man. I am the woman. I like you very much. But I'm seeing so many red flags on you. I don't think this is. Do you think that I could speak with you about these things and discuss them? That's that. That will be like the worst mistake you can make in life. <laughs> People Why? don't change. Who you are 10 years ago. Surely, you are surely, surely people can of, change. No, of course there's growth. We normally grow, <coughs> but human beings are extremely very consistent. Uh, <laughs> you, consistent. You, you, you're in which high school? I was in Olembo Boys High School. O- Olembo? Olembo, yes. Olembo Boys, yes. And I have to assume that you do have like a WhatsApp group. Yes. And you belong to it. Yes. Uh, have you noticed like the guys who are just horrible people are still horrible. Yeah, yeah. Like human beings never change. I, I, I know, I know even one that is not, that is out of WhatsApp group. Just the same, same person. Yeah, like people, the way we are, we really change. So you can never change anyone. Actually, women, women are the ones who make that mistake always, by the way. Yeah. They think that they can change a bad boy. I think you've seen that cliche, that, that thing that says, men marry women hoping she'll never change. And women marry men hoping you will change. Now, down the line, the opposite uh, happens. Men never change. If you married a bad boy, it's going to be a bad boy forever. If you married a cheater, like if, if during courtship, the guy cheating, 
in marriage it even gets worse and then now when you marry a girl uh, she's innocent she's a good lady and you hope she'll never change down the line she'll change because women grow like what she is in her early 20s is not what she is in her late 20s what she is in her early 30s is not what she is in her late 30s you know women like after every five years something happens to them there are those years of childbirth then children will become teenagers then she'll go into menopause then she'll become a grandmother and all those phases define women differently so that's something that people deal with in marriage different so a woman will be frustrated thinking that oh he promised me to change but he never cha- he never changed so she gets frustrated and you married a very good man but down the line something has happened she has changed and you know you don't know how to to deal with it so don't ever if you see a red flag that you can't put up with just run mm. it gets worse once someone once people settle and familiarity sets in it gets worse both for men and women yeah mm. Mm. then then life in marriage mm-hmm. Yeah, when I when I got into marriage I didn't know shit about it. The only thing I knew about marriage was from my from the marriage that my father had. Yeah. And the marriages that I saw around. Mm-hmm. There is a marriage that I saw around that was very nice. Mm-hmm. My uncle and the wife. Mm-hmm. Uh they were like Chandana Pete. Mm-hmm. In fact, that gentleman uh he was always the head of the home he was always n- never even once did i did i hear see them fight mm-hmm. it was the perfect kind of marriage that i really thought mm-hmm. should be ours was not very good mm-hmm. you know, my father was 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 a rough kind of alpha male that was yeah <laughs> a drunkard a guy that you know he if he was walking together with my mother he would be like 10 feet in front of her you know <laughs> <men were>, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so what what do you tell what do you know about marriage what 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 are some of the things that you that you have read or you experience that you think how men should behave in marriage i think what's happening is um the world has changed mm. and you are living in a completely different world um especially if you're born in the mid 80s onwards mm. uh the world that we are dealing with a completely different breed of women we're the first generation to deal with the most empowered woman because in college for example probably there are more women than men in, in some of our classes like sociology and anthropology and all that so as a man you need to understand that we're living in a completely different dispensation so once you get into marriage then you have to make certain adjustments but what should never change is that you must remain a man and people are going to succeed in marriage are, if you are a man remain a man if you are a woman remain a woman first of all and now from there now you can start you know there are those adjustments that you make maybe if she's at work maybe you can take care of the child that's like something you can adjust uh, if you are a woman your husband labda melemo you can chip in maybe he's not able to provide you know those now that adjustments from you deviate from the traditional roles but those traditional roles the way society defined them and we've lived like that for the last 6000 years 10000 years it's going to change in the years to come but we still in that phase where if you are a man be a man if you are a woman be a, be a woman but but now to speak to men I always tell men that uh, don't go into marriage as if it's an academic thing. Don't go into marriage as if like it's a romantic thing, you know. Because marriage is a serious thing. The material expectations that are uh, put on you especially the, the first 10 15 years, you're going to get children, school is very expensive and you have to maintain a certain lifestyle. Those things uh, that they're very serious so you have to be extremely very serious with it. And you have to learn to hold your woman accountable from the word go set the rules don't try to change the rules midway she should know who you are and what to expect out of her and saying like you should be a dictator but you know like if a sila this is what i expect out of my woman and she can also tell what she expects out of you but you have to be very strict because what what messes some men is that we joke around marriage a lot eh? we don't take it too seriously and the thing with women is that they can put up with uh, a lot of mediocrity but up to a certain level akifika to shabu eka na hivi anaenda and then now you'll be very miserable and you'll be like oh i love this woman you know mm. so that's why as a man you must never lose sight of the the goal ama kama ni kwa barabara umekanyaga hiyo njia marriage and you want the best out of it you have to be serious with it mm. because women are never serious with marriage nowadays anymore mm. but uh, it's a man who goes on a loss when you divorce 
you are the one who loses the most. Because for her, she can leave you, uh, but she can still marry some boss in her office and life goes on. Though that, that, that doesn't happen like most of the time. But for men, we are the people who invest the most. We don't know what it is, we don't know what it is, we don't know what it is, like the first thing, you know, you, we invest so much. And when the marriage collapses, you lose all those things. So that's why as men, you have to be extremely very serious. And when you notice that I'm uh, Pelekani Vizuri and you see there are irreconcilable things that are going on, the better to jump out of it as soon as possible. Because sometimes we stay in marriage trying to flog a dead horse and it, end, it ends up draining us more. Mm. Yeah. We're coming to the tail end of this conversation and wow, it's been bold. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about your books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have you have books. I would like you to tell the audience where they can, uh, wh what they are about, and what and where they can get them. There is one that is coming up, right? Yeah, I'm launching a book on July seventh. July seventh. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. It's the second volume of memos. Mm. So yeah. you can just talk about the first one and then talk about the second one and tell us. Yeah. yeah. Briefly, my first book was a novel called Sexercised. It's a, a novel about divorce. It's a middle class man who has been divorced and how he goes about it. It's raw, it's vulgar, it's um, like I wanted to capture that spirit, like the emotions, you know, the passion of a man who has been divorced. And um, it, be, it became, it, it's still a bestseller. It sold uh, thousands of copies. And my second book was like, was the first volume of memos, 50 memos that I combined between uh, June 2020 to June 2021. Uh, that came out, I think, in uh, September 2021. And then my third book was Man About Town, which is a collection of uh, narrative essays, basically my reporting about Nairobi, nightlife, you know, stuff about Nairobi, like I was trying to capture the spirit of Nairobi in the last 10 years, um, Man About Town. And now I'm going to launch my first collection of short stories. It's like my earlier fiction. It's called The Birthday Breakup and Other Stories, which, is, which I'm launching alongside the second volume of Memos uh, in, on, on July 7th. Yeah. Mm, where is the launch? Uh, the, we are still... Um, the, 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 we've, we've only determined the date. Okay. But the venue, well, I'm yet to confirm. And people will know it anyway. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll confirm from next week. Yo, so thank you very much. Yo, that was a lot, man. Yeah, and um, I, I love, I love these conversations about men because I am in a, in, I'm in a space of full of men uh, that are trying to find themselves, trying to ask questions, you know. And it's it's important that we always talk about these issues about men. Yeah, there are no easy answers. Because at the end of the day, men will still be expected to lead, and you can't lead if you can't, you are not a leader. Yeah. You know, so uh, people of the internet, thank you very much for uh, for tuning in to another episode of Dialogues with Jagero. Uh, thank you so much. I would ask you to subscribe to this channel if you really loved what we talked about. And the idea is that when the community grows, we can be able to grow this channel. A lot of people might find it. And at some point, you know, we will be able to get more guests. The more the, uh, the subscribers, I am going, Mr. Sai, for very bold people, okay. even internationally. Yeah. Uh, but you see, uh, there are people that love what I do and are my friends, and they can be able to come even if what they saw was just about 200 views. Yeah. And then there are people who are going to look at this channel and say, well, I want to see big, big subscriber uh, mm -hmm. base in order for me to come to this channel. So for that to happen, I need to have subscribers. So I would ask you, uh, people of the internet, that you, might so you may subscribe to the channel, share it, comment, and show Google that something good is going on. So until another episode, thank you very much and bye.